Hi, how's it going? My name is Carl Diaz. I'm with the Learning Resources Center here at the University of Colorado, Denver. And today we're going to be just solving two problems using our conservation of energy. I uh, just wanted you to see two problems together. I'm going to make two separate videos just so that you can see there's a theme here. There's something that you want to be seeing here. I want, again, I want to see things individually. So the first question we're going to uh, answer is George is going to bungee jump off a bridge that is 55 meters over a river below. The bungee cord has an unstretched length of 27 meters. To be safe, the bungee cord should stop George when he's two meters above the river. And again, we're saying that George knows the river, obviously. Um, if George has a mass of 75 kilograms, what is the minimum spring constant? Okay, so again, you wanna draw several pictures so that you understand what's going on, right? Here, George is at the top. He hasn't jumped, bungee jump, nothing's going on, right? Then he jumps and the cord reaches a point where it's it's full unstretched length, but it's there. And then George reaches a point where he's reached the bottom where there's a full stretch, right? And he should be uh, stopped at that point. So after you've drawn those pictures, right, with the reference points here, then you wanna go through and give a little bit more reference to what's going on in this question. So you start, right, with the initial, we know that conservation of energy we want to start to look at these questions, we'll always be looking at the initial situations and the final situations where these middle situations can be helpful in a sense, but you might not necessarily need them all the time. Okay, so we know that initially, right, we have some UG max, right? It's, it's maxed out in terms of our reference height, okay? Um, we know that elastic potential energy is zero because this is for this, the cord isn't stretched and we know kinetic energy is zero because the George isn't moving. Okay, so we know that's our initial situation. This middle situation is weird and why it probably might not be so useful is because we know UG here is going to have some value. We, we could solve for it, um, we just, you know, we don't really need to and he's going to have some kinetic energy. Again, we could solve for that as well. Um, but again, we don't need it, but they're gonna be some values. They're not gonna be this terms of maxes and zeros, right? We like situations where we have maxes, right? Full values and zeros, those are the easy ones to work with. So we see this middle situation where he's, the cord hasn't started to stretch, but he has started to move, jumped off the, 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 the plank there, is that we have this situation here might not be the best one to work with. And then we see when we get down here, when the cord's fully stretched and he's stopped two meters above the river like we want him to be, we see that the gravitational potential energy in terms of our reference height, right? So we have this height, but we're really only trying to, and I probably should have put that on here, go to this height, um, right? We're gonna be subtracting this two meters. So we really just wanna go here. So this is essentially our H in terms of uh, what we're doing, and that's exactly why you see some math done here, right? So we know that when we get to that reference point where we want to stop right here, right, this H here, we know that my potential energy, my gravitational potential energy will be zero because I've reached the final uh, point. Even though I have some distance still above the river, I can't reach that point because the bungee jump has stopped me, the cord has stopped me, right? So essentially, even though I have some height, my potential energy gravitational potential energy in terms of my reference point is zero because this is my reference point even though this is my total height this is where I'm going to right I'm gonna stop here All right okay so um, we know that elastic potential energy is max at this point because the cord is fully stretched and again the person stopped George isn't moving he's getting ready to he's done he's getting ready to head back up right so we know that the kinetic energy is zero at that point because he stopped moving so we see by this situation that this, right, this final situation and this initial situation are the best ones to work with in terms of conservation of energy because we have maxes and we have zeros here. Right? So we look, we write our general equation, right? K initial plus gravitational initial plus uh, initial elastic potential energy is equal to kinetic final gravitational final potential energy and elastic final potential energy, right? Then we look at our initial situation that we're going to use and say, okay, UG 
right, is max, ki is zero, right, and u elastic is zero, so those are gonna be zero. In our final situation, k is zero, right, ug is zero, but u elastic's gonna be max. So we rewrite our equation, getting rid of the variables that are zero, and we just see that ug initial be equal to u elastic final. Right? We really don't care about the kinetic energy that's happening here. If we wanted to know like the final velocity before you know he uh, you know he started moving up, or we needed to, we were asked about velocity somewhere in here, we would need to use kinetic energy. But we're not. This question is asking us about the spring constant, which is k, right? So in terms of the spring constant, we really don't. Uh, we're really not concerned about kinetic energy. That's another reason why we're kind of ignoring it. So, then I expand these two equations out, right? UG is MGH and elastic is one half KX squared. So I expand those out, right? And I'm wanting to solve for K, right? That's what I'm wanting to do. So I then solve an equation for K, but then I have these two variables, right? I have H and G. MG, we know what they are. But H and X squared, right? What are those gonna be? Okay, so I kind of fill in some givens here based off what I've already done. So we'll come back to that in a second. So we know, right, that H, right, isn't, I wrote 55 here, but I should just get the period in front of me now. Sorry about that. Right, we know that H, right, isn't this full displacement, right? We know H is going to be displacement minus 2 meters, right? So we, we know that he's actually just falling this much. So in terms of the gravitational potential energy displacement, would be 53 because we don't want to hit the bottom. We only want to get to that point, right? So, oops, and I wrote 55 there too. This should be 53, okay? So 53 is gonna go on that height, not 55 because we don't want to hit, if it would be 55 we would want to hit the river, we don't, right? And so uh, that's what H is gonna be. That's why the math is here. And then x squared, well remember, x in this equation right here, this x, that's the stretched part of the spring or the stretched part of the rubber band or the stretched part of the bungee cord, right? That's what x is. It has nothing to do with the unstretched length, right? So that's why we subtract the unstretched length, right, from that displacement that we're making, right? Not 55, but this displacement we want to subtract that unstretched length because we want to know how much the bungee is stretching once it reaches that 53 meters. So that's why we're subtracting 53 from 27, right, to get 26 meters. So the x is actually 26 meters, so 26 is going to go in here, right, because that's how much the bungee is stretching, right, once you put those numbers in there, you got k and it's that easy, okay. So thing to pay attention to here is what x is. x is the stretched part, which is why we don't include the unstretched part in, in terms of the length of the stretch in x, in terms of the x and that elastic potential energy. Right in this height, we're not falling through the whole 55. We're only falling through 53 meters, right? So that's why the height is the way it is. Those are the two things to kind of focus on here. And again, we're not concerned with gravitational or kinetic energy here, so we don't have to worry about it. All right, so now the second question, right? It's a skateboarder is launched by a spring initially compressed at a distance of x equals 0.5. So that means that this right here, right? It's been compressed, because normally the spring would sit here. It's been compressed. This is that 0 0.50 meters. That's what we're trying to say, right? If the spring constant of, of the spring is uh, 64, I don't know what that is trying to say there. That should be is. <laughs> is 64 newton meters, right? So if you wanna write that down, right? We know that the spring constant is 64. I don't know why I, why I don't have this. 64, right? And we know that X is 0 0.50, right? We know the mass, right? And the mass of the skater and the board together is gonna to be 50 kilograms. Those are our givens, right? How fast is he moving along the horizontal? So this is the horizontal, right? And how high up the vertical does he go? So we got two questions here, right? And these are our givens. Okay, so we know our spring constant, how much the spring was stretched, and the mass of the person. So again, you want to do what we did over here. Start with reference points, okay? Our initial 
situation where the spring is compressed a, a little bit, we have max, it's not the max for the spring, but it's the max for the system. There's max potential, elastic potential energy here. The guy's not moving and there's no height displacement, so kinetic energy in UG are zero in terms of the initial situation. Now, we're just trying to find out how fast he's gonna go along here. There is no friction. I didn't write that on here, but there is no friction. Um, should have been up there, um, but there is no friction here, so we're ignoring friction. So essentially, once the spring lets him go, the velocity that it lets him go is going to be the same velocity down here, right? Because there's no net force slowing the, the skater down. So we can just look at this situation, and then the final situation will be right before he starts to go upward. Its kinetic energy will be max, it's moving at its max velocity. The last, it's not attached to the spring anymore, so that's going to be zero. No, there's no height displacement at this point yet. So gravitational is going to be zero. So we start with our equation. K initial, right, we said was zero. Elastic's max, right, so we keep that. K final over here is max, but all the uh, potential energies are zero. So then we want to write our equation, right, which is this right here, which is U initial, right, is equal to K final, right? And then we fill it in. The U initial is the elastic, the elastic potential energy, which is one-half Kx squared. And the kinetic energy is one half mv squared. The halves cancel, right? And then we solve for v, v squared, so it's gonna be the square root of these things, right? Now we can write it this way, you can pull x out, because x is squared, so under the square root it's just gonna become x, and you can pull it out and write it this way, but both ways are correct, okay? You can write the velocity this way. So that's how fast the skater's gonna be moving here, okay? Now, how high up will the skater go? Yes, you could say, okay, I have kinetic energy, and then I'm gonna have some potential, and you can solve it that way using the kinetic energy from this point. Or you can do what we kind of did over here and just ignore what's happening here and just look at the initial and final situations, right? Yeah, we have zeros and maxes everywhere, so every point would be nice. Again, you could use this final velocity. Say, okay, I have some initial, you could say I have some initial kinetic energy here, Right? I have some final potential energy here, so you'll have some equation to describe the height here in terms of kinetic and potential. You can use that, or you can just start with this initial situation where we know we're not moving, but we have some elastic potential energy for the spring and no gravitational because there's no height displacement. And once we reach this height, right, we're, gonna, we're not going to be moving anymore. We're not attached to the spring anymore, so the elastic potential energy is zero, kinetic energy is zero, but we will have some height displacement, right? And that UG will be max. It's a max for the system, so we'll have that. So again, we can just look at initial and final situations, kind of like we did here, right? It's the, uh, the, uh, the equation is split, but it's the same equation, right, where we're just looking at here and here. This will determine what happens here. We don't need to look at the kinetic energy. And so the elastic initial, the elastic potential energy is one half kx squared. The final potential energy is mgh. Again, we want to know how high it went. So h is what we're looking for. So we solve this equation for h, which is this right here. And that's how high it's going to go, okay? Now again, yes, I want you to keep in mind that, that we could have just, you could have said, okay, we know the final velocity here. So we just want to know how high it's going to go based off that final velocity. So you could have said one half mv squared is equal to mgh, canceled out the ends and solve for h there, which would have been one half v squared over g. So it would have been, we would have one half. So that's the height you, you'd get if you use this velocity and just say the initial, you're looking at the initial kinetic energy and the final potential, right? This is the initial kinetic energy, this is the final potential energy. That makes sense. This is the final potential energy. Just looking at this half of the situation. So there's two ways to solve for height, right? You can use this velocity that we solved for in the first part and our initial kinetic energy to get the height. Or we can just use our initial and final situation in terms of elastic and gravitational potential energy. So I hope that was helpful. Again, you should See how these are the same thing. What we're looking at here is the same thing, essentially, uh, uh, in terms of how we're trying to solve things, how we, we can kind of ignore kinetic energy if we're not looking for that, and initial and final situations can be the same. So uh, again, to go to your tutor, go to your professor, get help where you need it. 
Thank you so much for watching these. I really do appreciate it. And I am super proud of you for working so hard. Keep up the good work and I'll see you on the next video.